Hey YouTube, Sign here. And on today's video, we're gonna give my thoughts on the Zenless Zone Zero beta, the final closed beta, that, or at least it should be, before the official release of the game. And just my thoughts on it after I put in around, let's say 100 to 200 hours in the beta. Currently I am internet level 50. Think of it being like level 50 in Genshin, our, uh, our Trailblaze 60. I've, I have everything unlocked. There's not much more to be done here. Um, you don't get anything more. This may change in the official release, but for now, 50, you unlock all the hardest like levels for like farming relics and whatnot. Um, I kind of stopped playing about a week ago because I felt like I've gotten a good experience of it, but I did want to wait until Watering Waves came out because I never got into play that game yet. And I just wanted to feel the combat in that game so I can have a better opinion on the combat in this game. Now, I do plan on talking on a lot of talking points. So we're going to be talking about the story, the overworld, the events, the combat, the TV mode. Yes, I will be talking about the TV mode, um, the characters, the events and the gotcha. I think I said events twice, but you know what I mean? Anyways, I do want to cover all of that in this video. So you can skip to whatever point you want to skip to if you want to hear it, a certain section. Otherwise, if you want to hear me rant and just talk about the game, uh, it's not going to be a rant, but it's going to be my honest feelings on the game. So if you want to sit down and go through the whole thing, I do appreciate it. If you want to leave a like and all that cool stuff, that would also be very much appreciated. And I do plan on covering the game when it does come out and hopefully to take back the feedback we've given to them and make the changes that are needed to make the game succeed on the official release. But with that, let's get into the story mode. Okay, so where do I begin starting with this story mode? Um, let's talk about the first elephant in the room, the previous beta. So from what I've heard with the previous beta in the game, that the story mode used to consume energy. That is no longer an issue. So we don't have to worry about um, losing energy in this game when you do the story mode. Now, energy will be similar to resin and uh, Genshin or Trailblaze Power in Honkai Star Rail to give you a little bit more context. However, um, that may be fixed, but there's still a couple issues with the story mode. First off, this story mode is a big pivot compared to previous Hoyoverse games like Genshin, Honkai Star Rail, even Honkai Impact to a extent, even though I've never played the game. It's what people have told me. Um, the biggest thing here is that the story is very lighthearted. It's very comical. There's no real dark, heavy beats to it. There's no real like stakes on the line. For example, with Genshin, you start off with losing your sibling and you go on this journey in the open world that you've never seen. And you know, it's scary or it's supposed to be scary and opening, uh, be frightening because you know, you're alone. Honk a star rail, you get thrown into this body and you're getting attacked on a ship and you got to make important choices and de defeat a dragon and all this other stuff going on. It's a lot of heavy beats to these games. This game, on the other hand, is very lighthearted. You're making jokes, you're doing some theft, you're stealing. Um, it's very lighthearted. It's not nearly as dark as the previous games. So if you're looking for a dark story, you're not going to get that. One thing I will mention, however, is the story mode has some of the best cutscenes of any gacha game. In fact, no, it's not some of it is the best cutscenes of any gacha game I've ever played or seen. That means Genshin has no chance, Honkai Star Rail, no chance, Watering Waves, no chance. It is number one and by a good tier above. So there was like tier one, tier two, tier three. There's tier zero and then tier one it's empty that's how big of a gap it is um with the amount of expressions you see with the characters and how the fluidity of the um the animation now one downside to the story that i think is a big downside is while the cutscenes are amazing the regular day-by-day -day story beats are some of the most bland of any uh hoyaverse gotcha game the reason being if you don't even get to see the full model of your character, everything is told to you kind of in like a uh, light novel, visual novel format. I guess a visual novel would be more the proper way of saying it, 
where the text is below the characters and you see the characters standing still and you may see them move a little bit but you don't really get to see the action or what's going on like you don't get to see the full model or anything so while they do have some of the best cutscenes in the game i do feel like the regular talking beats which that's going to be majority of the time you don't get the cutscenes that often um maybe one every like 30 40 minutes of straight story mode but what you're really going to be getting at the story beats with the very still image which does hampen the experience a little bit in my opinion that's how i feel in the story mode um i didn't take it too serious though but i do want to mention that this may be uh, fixed in the official release, but I don't see that happening. But that covers most of the story on my opinion. We're gonna move into the open world now. Now we're into the open world. Now the open world, it's not really open. Think of it like a small sandbox where you do get to move around and it does have life in the world but you don't get to explore it nearly as much as you would think, um, especially for a Hoyaverse game, uh, looking at like Honkai Star Rail and Genshin, it's pales in comparison. Not to mention that you have some of the slowest walk speed I've ever seen. Look at my run speed. Now look at my walk speed. What run? Walk. It's practically, slow as molasses. I really hope they bump up the movement speed in the game because right now it's unbearable. Secondly, one thing I don't like too much either is that these areas are very, very small. To go from point A to point B is maybe a minute or two. But the issue is that when you compare it to how long the loading times are, at least in the beta, I spend more time loading. I honestly, I probably spend more time loading than I do spend walking to where I need to walk to, which is definitely an issue in my opinion. It shouldn't be like that. Sonic 06 vibes is what I got. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna keep it real. I'm keeping it 100. It is what it is. I like the game, but I would like to see the either the load times reduced. I do play this game on the highest settings, so keep that in mind. Um, and I play, I believe, at 120 FPS. I play at 60. There's no 120 FPS, there's only unlimited. Another issue in the game that should be uh, fixed, this should be 120. This is the same thing with watering waves. I have a higher, um, I expect more out of Hoyoverse, so I would like to see that fixed. Um, especially because combat's gonna be a very big, it's the biggest thing about this game, spoilers. Um, so I need that fixed. I didn't, I didn't even mention that part, but I, yeah, that's got nothing to be mentioned. But in terms of the open world, one thing I do like is how lively it is. There's a lot of stuff going on between each day and night cycle. It's kind of like, um, uh, I don't want to say persona. No, it's lively enough. It, there's going to, you're always going to see different people walking around, even though the models may be the same. Um, it's a lot of things you do have to pay attention to though, which is, could be a uh, negative thing for some people. If you're gonna skip interactions with people, you will miss out on pivotal points that can hamper your progression in certain areas. So keep that in mind. I also like how they do give out free energy in this game via the coffee shop. That is one thing that I wish the other gotcha games did where they gave out free stuff. Now, Funny enough, we got something that I want to complain about is these gosh darn character like events. So like in Genshin or Honkai Star Rail, you can have like bonding time with certain characters that you unlock. The issue with this is that they appear so frequently that it can really slow down your progression and it can just be um, off putting because you're like, in a serious moment, you're trying to grind and whoop, character appears out of nowhere. And now you gotta go listen to them talk. So you're mashing the A button or keyboard or mouse, whatever button you hit on that. I don't know, I play controller. But um, you're mashing that to get through it as fast as possible because it's just in your way. I would like a way to toggle that on and off 
Uh, that would be nice because sometimes you may have maxed out like for example you match out, uh, the trust on one character you get their ability to be ran as a uh a host in your video store once you get to that point you should have the option of turning off events with that character if you don't want to see any more events with them so you either get less rng with them and it'll just make a lot less um it'll be a lot less stopping here and there that's a big issue i have so far uh, but that's just me other than that that pretty much covers the open world and by open world i mean this little small sandbox we have there are multiple areas in the game so we have currently three areas area one being here i think sixth street is what it's called uh area two being the brant street construction site keep in mind it's just one area it's very very small and then we have the ballot twin roads which is also a very small area the biggest area by far is sixth street but that covers the open world now it's time to talk about the events so we have the typical events the new character event the login events and your do this content clear under certain conditions get extra um currency in the game that's typical events other than that we had a couple events based on like the coffee mode where we got to double up on the coffee or get better benefits from the coffee meaning we got more rewards for our energy our resin our trailblaze other than that we did get one exclusive event that was unique to the game and that was a uh the event i don't recall so well off the top of my head the name However, it was an event based around collecting water for each section. And in this event, it was heavily a TV mode event, more or less, it, it's the TV mode. You did have a couple of small battles in between, and I would argue the battles hampered the event experience. I felt the event was better without the small battles as I was more focused on the mini games that you were doing in the TV mode, such as you were like playing to the beat of a song where you had to move with this, you had to move with to the beat to the song, or you had to dodge uh, bad zones in the area and they'll keep flipping between different colors or memory based events. Those were fun for the TV mode, honestly speaking. And I found that the combat was actually the weakest point of the event, which I find to be weird because I'm not the biggest fan of the TV mode, honestly speaking. I'll talk more about it when we get there, but I would say the event would, would have been better without the, the small combat sections and just focusing more on the TV mode. That's my honest thoughts on it. Other than that, that's pretty much covers the events. We didn't really get too much here. I hope to see a little bit more variety when it comes to the events when the game officially comes out. Now let's talk about the TV mode. Yes, the dreaded, dreaded TV mode. Now, one thing about the TV mode is I feel it's a little bit too prevalent in the game. It's a big time sink and a heavy commitment. That's my biggest issue with it. And it appears so frequently could you see it not only in these explore quests you're going to see it in the story mode as well and i think it took me a while before i i could even enjoy it honestly speaking um most of the time i, I was dreading it i was annoyed dragging it because i didn't want to do it because it just takes takes too long and for a lot of it i didn't even understand what i was doing I was more or less letting the game just handle most of the issues and it was a little bit just too much. The biggest thing I also noticed is between each in between each like action or what's going on in the background, it can be very, very confusing because events just happen and you just don't like that. You don't know what happened. Like what what just happened? And you just walk in randomly and just things happen and you're moving and it's, it's a lot. It can be very, very confusing if you just start playing the game and it will take a lot of time to adjust to. So I would like them to transition it in a way that makes it a lot more 
digestible for a newer player. Now, I know what's going on, but I've played so much hours into the game, new players are not going to have that same feeling of wanting to commit to a game for so long, and they're just being confused, annoyed, and bored. So I feel, first off, the best way to do it would probably make, like, just the speed of the interaction and what's going on a little bit faster. Next, zoom out the map permanently. This should be the base. This is what it starts off like. I didn't even know there was a zoom out function. This is what it, this is how the map should start normally. It's zoomed out. It makes it a lot less, um, a lot less congested on the screen if you can see more of what's going on. So I would like to see that changed. Other thing that I like to see changed is maybe optional bot. I, the small fights can end up being like a hindrance to people and it can uh, remove the emergent of the TV mode because you're now, they become Pokemon battles to give it a better way of looking at it. Imagine you're walking through the grass and then, oh, rat attack comes out. That's the, the little small battles at times. So rather than have the little small battles, maybe reduce that a little bit and focus more on the end fight. That's how I feel about the TV mode so far. I may have not explained it the best and the most clear way for people to understand it, but keep in mind, I'm doing this video very late. I should have posted this video a long time ago, but hey, we do it last minute because I'm a procrastinator and I'm a gamer. I may talk more about this. If you have any questions or you, you want to talk to me about it more, feel free to leave a comment, but that's pretty much sums up how I feel about the TV mode as it is. Now let's talk about the characters and I would say characters is the strongest part of this game next to the combat. The cast of characters we have here are very diverse, play styles are completely different. Not many characters feel too similar. Characters that I would say feel similar is like Ambi and Soldier 11. Um, other than that, most characters feel very, very unique. I haven't really had too many characters where I was like, oh, this character plays like that character. No. They're all playing different, which is a good thing. Now, the bad thing is Officer with such diverse characters, huh? our character pool is very, very I small. Considering this is a three team game, we're looking at roughly, what is that like? 18 or 16 characters overall so far in the beta. I don't know how many characters will release on the official release, but I can say for sure, they're not gonna be more than 20 characters. If they are, wow, I'm surprised but I don't see it happening. So keep that in mind that the, your roster is very small, leading to less um, character diversity when you see people play this game. And it can be, teams are gonna be very similar. Honestly, this is very similar to the situation with Hunter x Hunter. I don't know if anyone plays fighting games, but the new Hunter x Hunter 3v3 game came out. The roster looks to be like 16 in that game. People are very mad because it just hampers your diversity when you have to play with so many different characters when you don't have that many options. But at the very least, every character is very unique and they they bring a lot of fresh air and life to the character. They're not very like boring characters. None of these characters are because the game is very comical. Everyone's very unique and they're funny, which is good. So I like the characters. I like the leveling system for the characters. Um, it's very similar to typical Hoyaverse games, you know, crit rate, crit damage, your, your, your usual stuff. However, there is a new stat called penetration ratio, penetration stat. This, um, it's probably this defense shred. I, I have noticed not many characters have the ability to reduce defense down in this game. The only one I know of right now is Nicole. Um, but other than that, most characters don't have that ability. So I believe they put that ability into the characters um, like gear building. So that's going to get most of your ability to like sh remove defense from the enemies. And there are enemies that are going to have higher defense than others. So you may need it for those enemies, which can make building your gear an issue and speaking of gear and stats they still have this typical eidolon uh whatever system we want to call it the uh constellation i don't remember the name of it in this game but same thing here same leveling system it's not if you played hoyoverse game 
you know the gist of it. Now, when it comes to the gist of it, you already know your relics, your artifacts, we're here again. Same issue. Now, things are a little bit different here. Biggest thing being that these are drives. Ooh, different name, right? The same stat breakdown is going to be here, more or less. But the way you acquire them, it's going to be a tad bit different. So when it comes to drives, you can get them from your typical, like, artifact domain, dungeon, whatever you want to call it. In this game, it's called driver validation. You can get it from right here. However, the, a way that's kind of similar to uh, Honkai Star Rail, where we have a driver location where you can build your, your CDs or, or the disc, whatever you want to call them. The one thing I like about this system is the way you build it, it's a little bit different. And I made a mistake at the release of the game because I didn't realize that you make the CDs based on your leveling items. So you can see how I have 155 out of 50 and I can make a CD with that. If I just tune it, for example, real quick here. You can see I made CDs here. Now I'm at 105. Those same CDs I just made, I kind of wasted it because I can use that 155 to level up my CDs too. So they have it on the same bracket, which is an issue, I think. They should separate it. I don't think they should be the the one the items you use to level up your disc should not be the same items you use to make the disc. But it is something I want to talk about because it's, it's an issue. Hopefully they separate that to make it a little bit easier for people because I thought I was being smart making all the disc, not knowing that I wasted all my EXP fodder, which is like, yeah. But you can expect more or less the same ideas when it comes to building your characters in like um, this game. You want to get some critical rate up and stack critical damage on like your attackers supports you want to go like energy regeneration stuff like that same idea not too big of a different concept if you played hoyoverse games you're going to get the same idea you're going to get you're going to have pretty much this a good knowledge base and if you you haven't played it there'll be videos out there i'll make videos somebody will make videos you'll you'll understand it ain't gonna be too hard but I do like the roster. I just wish the roster to be a little bit bigger. But I understand because the character is so unique, we're not going to have that ability. It is what it is. Now, I was going to talk about events again, but I meant to talk about the VR device. Think of this like your hub for your energy. So... Just like in other previous Hoyoverse games, you're going to have basic things you can farm. So you have your level ups, your level up, your W engine, your W engine. Think of it like your weapon. Then you have your money farming promotion. So how you uncap your characters, how you level up their skills, how you level up their weapon, right? Now we have different tiers. So next one, this is the driver one I talked about previously. This is how you get your relics, your artifacts. Then we have expert challenge, which is going to be related to your character unique skill. Um, the best way to describe this would be the um, would be uh, the trace, I guess. It would no, maybe not even that. Um, yeah, I guess traces in a way would be kind of close to that. And then we have the weekly bosses, which are going to be your boss mats. So think of like your uh, Devalin, your uh, Cocolia, same idea. Now, the, there's some big issue with these guys. So let's talk about the, the weekly boss, for example. As you can see, I am level 65. This is the highest level you can fight. You may notice something here, 55, 45, 35, 25. This material, which is the boss's main material. The reason you're doing it, the drop rate does not change. I don't know if that's intended or not, but for the love of God, Hoyoverse, please fix that. I don't care about all this other stuff. I do it for this. This being locked to one is ridiculous. Come on. You've done it right before. Let's go back to it. Give me three. Give me two or three. Give me a guaranteed three. It, 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 one, you're, you're joking. You're literally joking. It's a joke. 
Now, the next issue we're gonna talk about, the other mat. This one, same issue. Highest level, 55. Let's look down. Oh, three to four again. Hmm, two to three. Two to three, two to three. You see the issue here? This is the base level. This is the highest level. You only see an increase of maybe one at this point. I don't think that should be that way. Another issue I want to see here. Oh, I got another issue right there. Let's talk about drivers now. So the way it works is that this is the first level, right? Understandable, right? Level two right here. Hey, okay. I'm fine with this. You get these early on. I don't expect to get S ranks. This is where we first get access to the S rank. It's not guaranteed. I can see it's zero through one. That's okay. It happens like most games. My issue here is 55. You may be thinking that's the next level. No. When you hit level 50, you unlock both levels, which makes this level useless. You're never going to play it. I've never played it myself. And at that point, you get one anyway. So what's the point? Then you get to this point where it's zero to two. Now, in my experience, you always get a drop from this, but it should be mentioned in here. I haven't had a run yet where I did not get a drop, but I am scared that it may happen and it shouldn't be read like that. It's to say one to two. Um, it'll give people a little bit less anxiety getting a zero drop at the potential because I don't want to get that. I did. There's no way anyone going to be happy if I get a zero drop. No, 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 no. They, that's another issue that should be fixed. Uh, other than that, that pretty much covers the VR device. I know that maybe I sound like I'm a, a boss or something. I'm not a boss. I'm looking for the best like interest of the game. So I'm talking just from my point on things that bothered me that I can assume may bother other players, right? But that's pretty much covers me for the VR device. Let's get into the next section. Now we're on to the next and funnest portion of any gotcha game, the gotcha. So let's start talking about the various gotchas we have. Now, like typical Hoyaverse games, we have the two important gotchas, one being the limited star, the limited five star rate up character, and then their usually their limited five star rate up weapon. These are typical. One thing I really like in this game, it tells you the number. Look in the bottom left corner. How many rolls do I need for an A rank? Six. How many rolls do I need for an S rank? 79. Perfect. Great. Per Good job, Hoyaverse. Add it to the other games, though. Uh, the same thing applies to the weapon. Same idea. The numbers are going to be the exact same that all Hoyaverse games have when it comes to their pity system. Get used to it. It's not changing, unfortunately. When it comes to the standard banner, we get the same thing. Now, in my experience, I don't get anything but weapons. I mean, I don't fall, excuse me. I don't get anything but characters on this banner. However, there are weapons that are five star. I just have not seen it yet, which is very weird considering I have 152 pulls and I ain't seen one yet, but it is what it is. The game is very generous, at least for the beta, in terms of how many pulls you get. I think it's going to be similar, if not better, than Honkai Star Rail when it comes to how many free pulls we're going to get. So expect that to be a good point, especially because this game we're going to have competition with Wuthering Waves, and I can see them fighting each other, giving out free pulls on both games to one up each other. I can very see that. I can very clearly see that that that's going to be a big competition. And just like how we got Dr. Ratio for free with Honkai Star Rail, I would not be surprised if they do the same thing with this game. Now we're on to the big what the hell. We have a fourth gotcha, a Bang Boo gotcha. Now this gotcha is a little bit different. You cannot pay to win it. Um, at least in no way that I know of. You cannot use the in-game currency to buy this gotcha. 
which is a good thing. However, it's another goddamn gotcha, meaning that you have more RNG to throw on another layer of RNG. If you don't know, the Bang Boos are your partners. Think of them like Paimon if Paimon did something. <laughs> That's pretty much what they are. I have not gotten a good understanding of the Bang Boo system in this game. I haven't really utilized it nearly as much as I would like to utilize them. Major point being is that they require investment and investing in the, the characters already hard as it is. Um, just like every Hoyaverse game or any gacha game really, when it comes to leveling brand new characters, it requires a lot of resources in the game unless you've been playing the game for a long period of time. In which case, you want to focus more on the characters rather than this bang boo that you really don't know what the hell they're doing. Therefore, I don't have the most experience with them and I don't really want to talk about them too much, but they are in another factor that can benefit your team, such as giving your team more energy or even taking the hostility away with the paper bang boo, who I really adore as probably one of the best ones in the game. For that ability because there are bosses that can just one shot you or if not kill you in a couple of hits because they do so much damage and you're under geared so having that option is very nice you don't really control the bang boo either so you gotta keep that in mind that um their ai control they they do their stuff based on the ai so just keep that in mind and they will be on the same rate as the other banners which i believe is 10 for A rank, 90 for S rank. But you cannot pay for the pulls. You will get plenty of pulls throughout the other events in the game that we'll talk about in one second. Okay, let's finish it up with these last couple events and probably the best things about the game in terms of the game. So I'm gonna put this within the combat section. So when it comes to the events, we have a couple of events here. We have these weekly rally quests. Think of these like um, a one map rush down where you just go through a gauntlet of enemies, getting to a boss and defeating the boss each week. That's pretty much your little game mode. It's cool. But the big game modes here are the two here, Hollow Zero and CU Defense. Hollow Zero will be simulated universe in this game, and Shiyu Defense would be uh, Memory of Chaos or Abyss. So starting with Hollow Zero, there are a couple layers to it. Each layer gets uh, progressively harder, so it's culminating to the Weathering Garden. Weathering Garden is amazing. Oh my god. I was not a fan of this mode prior to this mode. Withering Gardens was what saved this mode for me and gave me hope in the game. Because the boss at the end is extremely fun. I absolutely hate the damn targeting system when I fight it. God forbid they fix that because it's awful. But the fight itself is amazing. It's very unique. Nothing like, nothing is even remotely close to this boss fight in the game. And it gives me a lot of hope for potential future bosses and the level of difficulty they can bring and uniqueness. However, there's a lot of shit you got to get through to get to that point, which is very hit or miss, depending on how you feel about it. First off, each um, boss or each, I guess each Hollow Zero has its own level and leveling system. As you can see, they have points awarded to you upon clearing, which you can use to level up your overall level or level up your combat configuration, which is similar to the system in um, Star, uh, Star Rail, which I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head, but you, it's another leveling system. So you will have to do multiple runs and constant farming to level up these to the maximum. So keep that in mind. It is a roguelike game mode, so that it's going to be a bunch of diversity and branching paths and ways to do it completely different than anything else, which is probably going to be why I like this game mode the most in the game, honestly speaking, because it's very unique and it has a lot of potential for diversity. 
Next, we have Shiyu Defense, which is going to be Abyss at the end of the day. Uh, unfortunately, in the beta, we did not have the highest tier. So there's supposed to be two different tiers. It's supposed to be a stable node and a critical node. As you can see here, I completed the, all the stages, but I did not unlock the critical node. Um, I don't believe it's in this beta. Unfortunately, I would have liked to try it. But what I can talk about here is this, the stable node. Elemental diversity is king. As you can see here, there's going to be a boosted attribute in these stages. Once you hit stage eight, that's when you get to the hard part and you have to build six characters. If you guys know, you guys play these games, you know building characters are gonna be an issue. But the secret to this game is, you don't have to build every character. What the optimal way is in this game, build your DPS, ignore everyone else. You can play very defensive in this game with the dodge and the parry system. I guess the dodge and the um, perfect assist. You can play very defensive with that and abuse it to the point where your lead DPS will do all the damage and the tag ins will just be there to support whether they are um, support units like uh, Rena and Nicole who can give a reactive assist in combat. A reactive assist is a tag in mechanic. Or if they're a stun unit like, uh, I forgot his name. Uh, I don't remember his name. He's right there. He's a dog. I forgot his name. Oh my God. Lycon? Yeah, Lycon. There you go. So you can have units like that who can stun the enemy. And what stun characters are for? is that they build up their stagger meter to allow you to stagger the enemy quicker. So a lot of the game, especially early on, you're gonna be focusing on building around a support, one support, one DPS, and one stun unit. That's gonna be the easiest way to make progression when you have to worry about building a full team. Other than that, you definitely don't wanna double up on the same element. It's good to do like one ice, one fire or something just so you can have them in different areas uh i've noticed the most here that ice and electric is the most common combination so it's going to end up being that you want one ice unit and generally one electric you can see here like it's a very common that they're on opposite ends so it's going to be a very good combination to do early on now when it comes to the combat First off, it's hard. It's not, it does not explain enough in the game to the point where I would highly recommend most people read the proxy handbook. If not, you can watch YouTubers and we'll talk about the game and explain the, the core mechanics. But going into the game blind, you're not gonna know stuff and the game does not explain every system thoroughly enough in a training mode like they should. Especially when it comes to your ultimate, um, there is a counter called the decibel system. And then that system is how you build up the ultimate. And ultimates are only used once. So you have to pick one character through your party of three to cast the ultimate. That will count for the ultimate for all characters. Unfortunately, you know it's going to be a DPS. Because you're not going to ultimate on other characters. There's no point. So what ends up being an issue in this game is that you don't get to see the animations on all your characters because you're only using your ultimate on one character. So in the combat section, that's a big issue. Now you do get to see like a little glimpse of your ultimate via the chain attack system. So when you do a perfect assist, you tag in a character and they'll do something close to their ultimate, but you don't get the cut, cut in effect. It's close, it's like the same animation, but it's not the, the cut in. You don't get all the, the fancy you look at, and it doesn't do nearly as much damage. But that's about the only way you're gonna see ultimate on most of your characters, unfortunately. Another issue with the combat is that the targeting system can use some heavy work. I only noticed this in the Wittering Gardens because there's an enemy who spawns other enemies 
and then that enemy the main and the boss enemy is very um mobile so because the enemy runs away from you or moves in another direction your targeting system will target the closest enemy if the enemy gets too far from you which can really mess you up because now you're targeting things you did not want to target and if you're running at the boss you may end up running into the other direction which can cause you to get hit by things you don't want to get hit so i've noticed the targeting system can use a little bit of work for sure other than that that pretty much covers most of the combat basic attacks are your bread and butter the dodge mechanic is by far the most broken mechanic in the game dodge counter it's going to be your pretty much your bread and butter for quick succession dps the only issue is that it's not the most optimal dps you do want to perform your assist as some characters can give you more buffs after you do the reactive assist so there's a lot to it but that pretty much sums up all of it. I know there's a lot of talking and this video is very long, but there's a lot to talk about when it comes to this game. Um, people may want to sum it up in like a couple minutes, but I don't think you can really sum it up because this game is very controversial. I think it's the most controversial release of a Hoyaverse game and it does have a big competition with Watering Waves. I don't want to compare both games to each other because this is just a beta and we haven't had the full release yet. So things can always change. Um, I wanna be optimistic about the game. So I don't want to put out any negativity or anything like that. So comparing them would be ridiculous. But if you have any more questions for me or anything you wanna hear or my thoughts on anything, leave it in the comments down below. And if you made it this far in the video, congrats. I know it's very ramble, but there's so much to talk about. I didn't wanna put out like, a pre um written like video i wanted to talk straight from the heart and give you guys my real thoughts on the game as i see it in its full uh in its full experience other than that thank you guys for watching i will catch you on my next video until next time later